Since the release of OpenAI's ChatGPT in November of last year, it's becoming increasingly clear that a major historical transition is underway. AI, let's talk about AI a little bit. We have talked a lot about the rapid explosion of AI in the workplace. AI revolution and how artificial intelligence is hard at work on some farms. And for the first time in our 300,000 year history on this planet, we're finally able to appreciate its significance in real time. The age of artificial intelligence has dawned. Just seven months ago, few people outside of Silicon Valley had ever even heard of OpenAI. But after its dramatic unveiling of ChatGPT3, it has become one of the fastest growing apps and companies in history. Today, OpenAI boasts over 1.2 billion users, and there's good reason for that. Its flagship AI chatbot can do a heck of a lot, it can write impressive poems, song lyrics, essays, stories, and business proposals. It can fix your broken code and generate new code. It can ace the SAT and the bar exam and do your taxes all in a matter of seconds. Combination hookah and coffee maker also makes Julian fries. But after weeks and months of widespread amazement at the capabilities of these large language model AIs, the hangover has begun. Caution is turning to fear and fear into panic an emerging group of AI insiders are raising alarm bells about the potentially catastrophic consequences of this new technology. We've heard from the utopians and the dreamers, those who have promised us that AI will cure diseases, make us fabulously wealthy, and give us eternal life. But allow us to introduce you to the doomers. In recent months, a small but vocal minority of AI insiders are driving the news cycle. Experts from the top tech companies in the world are issuing a stark warning that the evolution of AI technology could lead to human extinction. It's not being deployed in a safe and responsible way. It's being deployed in a very dangerous way. Referred to dismissively as AI doomers by many in the field, they've suddenly found themselves at the forefront as the spokespersons for a new push to pause, slow, or end research into AGI altogether. For example, a recent and ominous article in Time Magazine by a prominent researcher went so far as to say, quote, if somebody builds a too powerful AI under present conditions, I expect that every single member of the human species and all biological life on Earth dies shortly thereafter, end quote. Well, that's comforting. A slightly less apocalyptic but equally alarming declaration came in the form of a 22-word statement from a group of researchers, engineers, and CEOs. Quote, Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. End quote. The statement, published by a nonprofit called the Center for AI Safety, has been co-signed by important AI insiders like Google DeepMind CEO Demi Hassabis and OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. Proceeding with caution is always a prudent approach, but does the development of artificial general intelligence pose an imminent existential risk to humanity? Or is something else going on here? What's behind all this AI fear-mongering? A wise person once said, what has been will be again. There's nothing new under the sun. Which is to say, history tends to repeat itself. And the response to the rapid rise of revolutionary technologies is almost always characterized as catastrophism and panic. Let's dig into that a little. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this brief historical interlude. A brief and bloody history of tech panics in 60 seconds or less. In front of a crowd of Sumerians, a bearded man holds up a scroll. We give you writing! The crowd oohs and ahs until someone shouts, this will destroy young people's memories. A group unveils a new invention. We give you the loom. The Luddite rioters, but this will destroy weaving jobs. In the 20th century, the panics only accelerated from one technological or cultural innovation to the next. In the 1950s, fear over the youth obsession with comic books led to a moral panic swept across America. Laws were passed, people were vilified, and careers ruined. The same process has played out again and again. In the 1980s, there was panic over arcade video games and Pac-Man addiction. Psychologists are beginning to worry that some youths are becoming spaced out on the space games. Then it was heavy metal music turning youth to Satanism, and violent video games and rap lyrics in the 90s and 2000s. And a few years ago, it was social media, virtual reality, and the metaverse. In every case, the looming catastrophe never happened, and the hubbub was quickly forgotten. 
The Warriors moved on to the next technology, leaving behind only the chaos created by the panic itself. Book bannings, religious crusades, censorship, and witch hunts. The cure was almost always worse than the disease. So what about AI? Well, what if there was another historical episode that could give us a clue about where these new breakthroughs in AI are heading? And what if that episode was itself a seminal moment in the development of artificial intelligence that somehow everyone seems to be forgetting? The answer is just two words, deep blue. The IBM supercomputer that in the 1990s trained its sights on mastering the game that to many represented the pinnacle of human creativity and intelligence, chess. Picture this, it's 1996 in Philadelphia and the reigning world chess champion, the highest rated chess player in history, sits across from a team of programmers to play a historic chess match. For the first time in history, a team of computer scientists from IBM had built an AI chess engine that they claimed could best the greatest chess mind alive. And that man, Gary Kasparov, accepted the challenge. It was a human versus machine moment and it was a global news event. So what happened? Well, in the first of six games, an overconfident Kasparov would face a crushing defeat to Deep Blue. It sent shockwaves across the globe, but Kasparov would not give up. Over the next five games, Kasparov battled back and managed to stave off what many thought would be the end of chess as we knew it. It was a nail-biting and bloody victory for Kasparov, but the relief was very short-lived. Just one year later in New York City, we would witness another watershed moment. After trading wins as white and then three successive draws in games three, four, and five, game six proved decisive for IBM's Deep Blue. After 19 moves, a stunned and dumbfounded Kasparov would resign and exit the stage in a visible state of shock. And whoa, we look Kasparov after the move C4 has resigned. Deep Blue defeated Kasparov three and a half to two and a half, and the chess world was forever changed. Not only had Kasparov endured a devastating loss to this newly ascendant artificial intelligence, he had endured the first tournament loss in his entire professional career. It was a crushing blow, and Kasparov, who was stunned by the AI's success, would go on to insist a team of grandmasters was operating a prank. You know, pulling levers and tipping the scales behind the curtain, as it were. So you can imagine what happened. Chess was turned upside down. People fled from the sport in droves, hung up their cleats, moved on to greener pastures, and the machines took over, right? Chess definitely changed, but not for the worse. Humans were not replaced. They were enhanced. Slowly but surely, the chess community adapted. The top players began to use these new AI chess engines to break new ground, to advance their knowledge, to help teach the game to a new generation of tech-savvy kids. With the likes of Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura, and a new class of talented Twitch streamers and exciting chess apps, AI's chess capabilities have quickly receded into the background. So what's going on here, really? Are we being naively optimistic? Well, we'll see. Anything is possible, but if the history of technology teaches us anything, it's that new revolutions in tech will inevitably bring changes, but humanity tends to adapt and grow as a result. The debate about AI will rage on. The utopians will focus on the potential upsides, and the doomers will call attention to existentially catastrophic scenarios, however remote a possibility they may be. In a way, that's a healthy process, one that allows us to collectively weigh the trade-offs of new technology and, maybe, if we can manage it, take sensible action to protect against the worst possibilities. The reality is that AI is not new. It wasn't introduced by ChatGPT. Artificial intelligence has been with us for decades, slowly but surely working its way into every corner of our lives. The age of artificial intelligence is here, and it's up to us to avoid the pitfalls of naive utopianism on the one hand and existential panic on the other.